Hey guys, Yumi here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace your charcoal canister on your 2007 to 2012 Nissan Versa. So, the charcoal canister is located in the back right of your car, located under here. Uh, there are a couple bolts you will need to take off. It's easier access if you take off your wheel, but it's not completely necessary. But, if you have the steel, the steelies or the steel wheels, it might be a little harder to do. And the reason why I am replacing this is because I'm having difficulties refueling at the pump and I've also been having uh, starting issues for the past year and a half. And Nissan did issue an extended warranty for this for any car that's I think 2004 to 2017 that's under 150,000 miles or 15 years whichever comes first. But I'm not eligible for that extended warranty so I'm just gonna replace it myself. I also wanted to add that the refueling issue and the starting issue um, it's really it was really hard to diagnose because the charcoal canister does not always sh shoot a check engine light on Nissan's for some reason for the the ones that were recalled so I was just basing that off of my symptoms doing a quick Google search so uh, I guess do this job at your own risk and see see if it works. This is what the part looks like and the part number here is 14950ET000. One way you can test your charcoal canister to rule out if it's working or not. Uh, you attach a hose to the purge valve, which is this one right here, and then feel for airflow coming out of the fuel tank valve. The tools and supplies I'll be using today are a rag, three and a half inch dry wrenches with a 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter sockets, as well as extensions, pry tool, flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers and some QD electronic cleaner. First thing I'm gonna do is take off these plastic trim pieces. Um, I've already taken this off before and I broke some clips, so I switched them out with some zip ties to some of the clips. Uh, you could just use the pry tool and a, or a, a flat-headed screwdriver. And then this one right here is a 10 millimeter. Everything else are clips, I believe. It's not completely necessary, but taking off the top of the upper plastic part makes the job a lot easier. So for the next part, I'm going to be removing the harness connectors. You can just use pliers to press these. It's really hard to push. And then for this, also for this clamp, use new and those pliers to push push it apart. And then the most there's a hose. There's another hose in the back that doesn't have a clamp. So you could just use a pry tool to push it off. And then the middle one is the hardest. Uh, the most difficult hose to disconnect it connects to the fuel tank and has two buttons you have to press to get it off it took me like two days to figure out how to get it out but the way i did it is i squeezed the two buttons with needle nose pliers and then wedged in the my pry tool in the gap between the hose and the, and the canister itself and i was able to get it off easier that way instead of trying to because if you try to press it with your hands it really wears out your hands it makes makes them really tired and they hurt so yeah I 
found it easier to remove the middle hose after dismounting the canister. Um, there's, I believe, two more 10 millimeter bolts and then there's a 13 millimeter in the back. I would start out by undoing the 13 millimeter and then you can slide the canister off the mount because there's like a little hook part that goes inside the like a little notch on the canister. Especially if you're in a closed area like a garage. Here is the replacement one. I got the mount because I kind of destroyed my mount, so like stripped the bolt holes and bent it a little bit. So I got this at the junkyard for about $16. I also got an extra hose for an additional dollar or so. Uh, and then I'm just gonna clean the connectors here because they might have been sitting out for a while. And then I already cleaned the connectors on the car when I took off the charcoal canister earlier just when I was testing it. So yeah. So I'm just using the QD electronic cleaner that I mentioned earlier. And it took push. you're done cleaning it make sure you shake out any excess liquid it usually evaporates pretty quickly because it's mostly acetone I think but I'm gonna let give it some time to dry in the meantime I'm gonna go take off the mount of the original charcoal canister the only other bolts you need to take off for the mount are two 10 millimeter bolts Here is the replacement hose I'm going to install. Uh, I, I pulled both the hose and the canister from a 2010, so it's a year newer than my car. I wasn't sure on the mileage, but I tested the, the valves and they, they work pretty well, so I think this would be pretty good condition, I would assume. the two side by side I think see that I think it's like a some type of solenoid or something but they look completely different even though they serve the same function and they have the same connector type but on the perch side it looks almost exactly the same so now we'll be installing the new mount just the three 10 millimeter bolts And when you 
you're tightening things down, uh, you could just make it hand tight. I wasn't able to find anything in the repair manuals about the charcoal canister. So, um, so just make it as tight as you can. Just don't try to over tighten it. Otherwise you might strip some threads or you might snap off the bolt head, which is really bad. So just be careful on that, but make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't wobble anything. So I'm going to be installing a new canister. I'm going to be mounting it first before reconnecting the hoses or putting back the connectors because they're not that difficult to reinstall. The most difficult part is taking them off, but putting back together is not that difficult. So like I said before, there's a notch here and you want that to line up with the hook that's on the mount. right here. Right here. Right there. And that's supposed to go inside the notch. Next thing you need to do is just put the cover back on and that's it. guys thanks for watching I would say you can get this done within like an hour to an hour and a half so it's super easy to do as long as you know what you're doing and if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more versus related content thanks bye